So in class on Friday, we learned how to uh, solve compound inequalities and also absolute value inequalities. All you do is kind of pretend that it were a regular inequality, like 4x minus 2 is less than 10. And what would your first step right there be? Anybody? Yeah, you add 2 to both sides. Okay, so normally you add 2, and what you do to one side, you do to the other side. However, right here, since there's the middle and the two outside sides, whatever you do to the middle, you do to both outside sides. So not only do you add two here, add two there, but you also add two over here. And I hope you guys uh, keep up with me as I explain it. So what I have here in the middle is a 4x. On the left side, I have a negative 8. On the right side, I have 12. And those less than symbols just come straight down, less than, less than. And now for my final step, I really have a 4 times x. To get rid of that multiplication of 4, I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying by 4, which is dividing by 4. And what I do to the middle, I do to both outside sides. So I'm going to divide both this one by 4 and that one by 4. So my answer will be the compound inequality. Negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. You just have an x in the middle. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. And the rule to inequalities remains true on compound inequalities, that if you multiply or divide by a negative on your last step, that's where you flip the inequality symbol. And we are dividing by a positive 4, so we don't flip those symbols. They stay the same. And this is what you would type in to get full credit on this question um, on the test Thursday. Okay. Um, let's move on to number 2. I hope everybody gets number 1. Let's move on to number 2. Number 2 is an absolute value inequality. And step one on any absolute value equation or inequality is to isolate it, to get it by itself. In other words, we do not have a times two or times three out here in the front. It doesn't say three times the absolute value, so we don't have to worry about getting rid of a three. Uh, there's no um, minus seven back here the where you'd have to go plus seven, plus seven. It's already isolated for you. So we could jump right into the second part of solving, which is the positive situation and the negative situation. Um, what would I write as my positive situation, or how do I write my positive situation? Anybody? Yep, same thing without the absolute values, right? So 5x minus 10 is greater than 5. The same identical thing without these absolute values. Just rewrite it, okay? For the negative situation, it's the same exact thing, but you're going to change that inequality. Instead of a greater than, you're going to make it a less than, and you're also going to put a negative on that number 5. So it's going to be the same exact thing, 5x minus 10 without the absolute values, but you are going to change the inequality. You're going to change it to a less than, and that 5 is going to change to a negative 5. So on the negative situation, you change the inequality and you change the sign or signs of the right side. And then we're going to solve both. So let's focus in on the positive situation first. How do you get rid of that minus 10? You're going to go plus 10. What you do to one side, do to the other. You're going to end up with 5x is greater than 15, which is really saying 5 times x is greater than 15. To get rid of multiplication, you do division. So divide by 5, divide by 5. You got x is greater than 3. Hopefully, you're keeping up with this work in your notebook. Now, going for the negative situation, same deal. You get rid of the minus 10 first, plus 10, plus 10. You're going to rewrite it. It says 5x is less than 5 which is really saying 5 times x is less than 5. And if you don't want that multiplication of 5, you do the opposite, which is dividing by 5. And what you do to one side, do to the other side. You'll end up with x is less than 1. You don't flip the symbol because you didn't divide by a negative. Anyway, these are your two answers. However, we need to know on the test if we're going to have this written together with the word or right in between them or if we're going to write them together as a compound inequality. And all that depends on how it looks like on the number line. If the areas are together, you have to write it together. If the areas are apart, you could keep them apart with the word or. So from here, you have to move on to the number line. And obviously, we're going to put the smaller number 1 on the left side, the bigger number 3 on the right side. So I'm going to put a 1 right here and a 3 right here. 1 on the left, 3 on the right. And then I'm going to graph this one in red. X is greater than 3, open dot at 3, going to the right. And I want to graph this one in blue. X is less than 1, open dot at 1, 
less than is to the left. So these areas are clearly apart. They're apart, which means that these answers, well, I'm sorry, these answers right here, I'm just going to keep them apart with the word or. If the areas would have been together, I would have to write it as a compound inequality with one on the left side, three on the right side, X in the middle with less than symbols. But because they're apart, I'm just going to keep those answers apart with the word or. So to get full credit on a question like number two, you're going to write X is greater than three or X is less than one. That's your complete answer with the word or separating the two answers. Again, if it would have been together, we would have to write it as a compound inequality written together. So let's move on to a couple more interesting questions. Number three, go ahead and copy it down. So what's step one on solving any absolute value equation or inequality? What's step one? Isolate it, right? You want to get it by itself. You have a five takeaway three. Don't say five takeaway three is two. That's incorrect. Here's your absolute value. You have a five. You have a minus three times the absolute value. You got to get rid of each of these, the five and the negative three. Imagine if you had a big equation that said five take away three X equals 11 or five take away three X is greater than 11. How do you start solving that? You start by getting rid of the five. So you're going to get rid of that five by subtracting five. And what you do to one side, you do to the other side, subtract five over here. So then we just rewrite this thing. We have the negative three absolute value two X minus four absolute value is greater than six. Okay, so what that really means is negative three times the absolute value. Now, if you don't want that multiplication of negative three, you get rid of it by doing what? Dividing. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So you're gonna divide by negative three, divide by negative three, and this is an inequality. It is an inequality, and when you divide by a negative on an inequality on your last step, what do you do? You flip the symbol. So what we're gonna have here is the absolute value of two X minus four, is less than, so instead of greater than, it's gonna become less than, because we divide by a negative, is less than what? Negative two, okay? Now from here, some of us are thinking, well, I, I already have it isolated, now I could do my positive situation and my negative situation, right? But don't do that. Why not? Because if you, if you read this and understand this, this is saying the absolute value of something is going to be less than negative two. What is less than negative two? A negative three, a negative five, negative 20, negative a thousand. It's going to be a negative number, right? So when you say the absolute value of something is going to be a negative number, you know that that's impossible because the absolute value of anything has to be positive, right? Okay. So what do we say right here? No solution. Okay. That's a no solution problem. Okay. Once again, the absolute value of anything it has to be positive. So there's no way that you could do the absolute value of something and it'll be less than negative two because that implies that it would be negative. This cannot be negative 2.1. It can't be negative 25. It can't be, uh, when you do the absolute value of something, it ends up being positive. So whenever you end up with something impossible like that, you just say no solution and you move on to the next question. So if you're thinking, man, that kind of sucks, you actually want these questions on the test because they're a lot faster and easier to do than the other ones. Once you understand that the absolute value of something has to be positive, you know that this is impossible. So you just say no solution and you're done. Let's move on to another interesting one. Here we go. Copy that one down. Now, some of us are looking at this thing and thinking, oh, no solution is the answer, right? Because the absolute value of something can't equal a negative number. However, this is a greater than symbol, right? So think about numbers that are greater than negative five. Could this be a uh, negative two? No, it can't, but zero is greater than negative five. All the positive numbers are greater than five. So this, it, it could work where you take the absolute value of something and the answer is gonna be greater than negative five, right? So you actually need to work this through. It's not a no solution problem. If it were an equal sign, then yeah, that's impossible. You can't have this absolute value of anything equaling a negative number. But because it's a greater than symbol, you could actually work it through and find your answers. So because it's isolated, you now jump to the positive situation and negative situation, squiggly line in between. The positive situation, you just rewrite it exactly the way it is without the absolute values. 
So what we have here is a 2x minus 3 is greater than negative 5. For the negative situation, it's the same exact thing, 2x minus 3, but instead of the greater than, you flip it, you make it a less than, and instead of the minus 5 on the negative situation, you're going to change that to a plus 5. So on the negative situation, you're going to have a 2x minus 3. You change that to a less than instead of a greater than, and that negative 5 becomes a positive 5. And now you have your two situations. And now we could actually solve both of them. On the left side, I'm going to get rid of the minus 3 first by adding 3. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. I end up with 2x is greater than negative 2, which is really saying 2 times x. 2 times x is greater than negative 2. To get rid of multiplication of 2, I divide by 2. And what I do to one side, I do to the other side. I end up with x is... Do I keep the symbol or flip the symbol? Keep it. We didn't divide by a negative. So it's still x is greater than, but that's a negative 1. Okay, now let's solve the negative situation. Once again, begin by getting rid of that minus 3, plus 3. What you do to one side, you do to the other side, plus 3. Your new inequality is 2x. The less than symbol comes down. 5 plus 3 is 8. And that's really saying 2 times x is less than 8. To get rid of the multiplication of 2, you're going to do the opposite, which is divide by 2. What you do to one side, do to the other side, you end up with x is less than 4. So you have these two answers. It is uh, absolute value inequality. So we need to determine whether these answers are going to be written exactly the way they are with the word or between them, or maybe we have to write them together as a compound inequality. And that all depends on the area of these inequalities on the number line. So let me go to a, a number line right here. Give me one second, just make some space here, whoops. So here's my number line. And when you graph it on a number line, always put your smaller number on the left side, which in this case is the negative one, and put your bigger number, the positive four, on the right side. I mean, you could fill in the values like zero, one, two, three, four, if you wanted to, but I'm not going to, right? And we're gonna graph this guy in blue. X is greater than negative one. So open dot at negative 1, greater than to the right. And this guy on a graph in red, x is less than 4, open dot at 4, less than to the left. So these areas are clearly together. So if the areas are together, we have to write our answer together as a compound inequality. And that is really easy to do if you uh, already have that drawn on a number line. Because the smaller numbers on the left side, the bigger numbers on the right side, that's exactly how you're going to write your answer. Smaller number on the left, the bigger number on the right, x in the middle, and you're always going to have less than symbols. Why is it always going to be less than symbols? Because it has to open up to the right. If you put the bigger number on the right, it has to open up to the right. If you put the smaller number on the left, then it can't open up to the left. It has to open up to the other direction, to the right. Okay. So if the areas are together, uh, you just put the negative 1 right there, the 4 right there, and less than symbols right there. Now, of course, if it was uh, greater than or equal to to start with, then these would be or equal to's as well. But it wasn't or equal to, so these are not or equal to's. Does that make sense? Okay, so now with those four questions that we've reviewed, we should be able to uh, do these questions on this worksheet, the highlighted ones, five. What is five? It's just a regular compound inequality. You would obviously like add 20, add 20 to both sides, and then divide by 3, divide by 3 on both sides. You get a compound inequality answer. Uh, you should also be able to do all of these guys down here, which are all absolute value inequalities. So this is isolated. You jump right into the positive and negative situation. Positive situation, write it exactly the way it is. Negative situation, flip it and change it. Make that a less than or equal to, and make that a negative 5 for the positive and negative situation. On number 13, even before doing the positive and negative situation, you're going to have to isolate it. You're going to have to add 7, add 7 to get it by itself. And then once it's by itself, then you do the positive and the negative situation. Anyways, um, there'll be a different video explaining the homework uh, questions. Um, but right now, on the first half of class, with what I've taught you or what we've gone over, you should be able to answer questions 5, 9, 11, 13, and 15 but seven and eight are special case problems, and I want to continue with the lesson and go over those special case problems. 
So you don't have to copy this down, but I do want you to read it and pay attention because this is how we're going to truly understand how to do question seven and eight on that worksheet. So once again, just read along. You don't have to copy this down. The word or most of the time implies no overlap, implies that the areas are apart, okay? Um, so if I were to graph x is less than negative 2, open dot at negative 2, less than is to the left. And if I were to graph x is greater than 1, open dot at 1, greater than is to the right, that makes sense because the word or most of the time means that it's going that way or that way. The areas are apart. The word and most of the time implies that the areas are together, okay? So if I were to graph x is greater than negative 3, open dot at negative 3, greater than is to the right. If I were to graph x is less than 0, here's 0, open dot at 0, less than to the left, the areas are together. And that makes sense because of the word and. It's between here and here, right? Um, the word or, it's going that way or that way. So most of the time, the word or implies the areas are apart. Most of the time, the word and implies that the areas are together. Does that make sense? Okay. But... The word or truly means that it could be one or the other. It doesn't have to be both, okay? The word and truly means that it has to be both, which means that it has to have an overlap on the, on the line. So let's do this uh, activity. So this is what we're going to do. What's up, eighth period? Okay, uh, if you have blue jeans, stand up. Cool, cool. All right, uh, take a seat. If you have white tennis shoes, stand up. Okay. All right, so how about this? <clears throat> what if I said, if you have blue jeans or white tennis shoes, stand up. Blue jeans or white tennis shoes. Okay, so when I use the word or, it doesn't have to be both. It's just one or the other, right? Okay, but how about this? If I say, if you have blue jeans and white tennis shoes, stand up. See what I'm saying? Okay, so the word and implies that you have to have the blue jeans and the white tennis shoes, right? Blue jeans and the white tennis shoes. It can't be one or the other. It has to be both. Make sense? So that's how it is with regards to um, this piece right here that I'm talking about. So let's pretend we had a, a, a cr pretty crazy inequality and then another crazy inequality and had the word or between them and you were solving it and you did all the correct work and for your final answer, you got X is greater than negative three on one of them and you had X is greater than one on the other and there was the word or between it so you still have the word or between it. Are you guys with me? As a matter of fact, in your notebooks right now, just jot this down. Write down, what if I got this as an answer, okay? What if I got this as an answer? You don't have to copy down the whole thing, but just copy down, what if I got this as an answer, okay? What will your final answer actually be? If this is what you got as a, as a final answer, what will you actually put to get full credit? Well, to get full credit, you need to graph it. So here it is. I'm going to graph this X is greater than negative 3 in green, open dot at negative 3, greater than is to the right. Yay? The other one on a graph in yellow, X is greater than 1, so you go to 1, greater than is to the right in yellow. Okay? So when you graph a compound inequality, there's three areas on your number line. You have the left side, the middle side, and the right side. Okay? So let me ask you this with regards to the word or. On the left side, do you see a green or a yellow line? No. In the middle, do you see a green or a yellow? Yes. Do you see a green or a yellow? Yes. As a matter of fact, it's both, right? But where does it start satisfying the word or? It starts satisfying it from here this way. From here this way. So the only answer you have to write down, if you got this as an answer to a question, the only answer that you write down is X is greater than negative 3. That's the only answer you write down. Does that make sense? Because if you think about the word or, it doesn't have to be both. It's just one or the other. Is there a green or yellow here? No. Is there a green or yellow here? Yes. Is there a green or yellow here? Yes, there's both, right? So it starts satisfying it from this open dot at negative three going to the gray. 
So this is the only answer that you type in. You shouldn't type in both. You only type in that one, okay? Like I said, most of the time with the word or, the areas are apart, but this is a special case. They're going in the same direction. The word or is from here, negative three to the right. So X is greater than negative three is the answer. So let's think of the same situation, but instead of the word or, let's say you have the word and, okay? Um, actually, have it right here. Instead of the word or, there's a word and, okay? So go ahead and write this down. What if, what if you solved uh, two inequalities that had the word and between it and you got this right here as an answer? How do you present your final answer? Well, you're going to have to graph this guy. X is greater than negative 3. Open dot at negative 3. Greater than is to the right. And you're going to have to graph this guy. X is greater than 1. Open dot at 1. Greater than is to the right. And the word and means something. It's kind of like having blue jeans and white tennis shoes, right? So there's three parts on your number line. The left part. Is there a green and a red line? No. Right here, the middle part, is there a green and a red line? I mean, a, a green and a yellow line? No. Over here, is there a green and a yellow line? Yes. So what are you going to put as a final answer? Anybody? The X is greater than 1. Because that's from, from here, 1, this way, is the only place where you have both the green and the yellow. The word and implies both. Okay? So on this case, you only write your answer X is greater than 1. That's it. Now, most of the time, when you see the word and, yeah, it's going to be an area that's together. And technically, when it's together, the green one goes that way, the yellow one goes that way, and the overlap is right here in between. So you would have to write it as a compound inequality written together. But this is a special case where the word and it has to be both. You have to talk about the overlap. It can't just be white tennis shoes. It can't just be jeans. It has to be both white tennis shoes and jeans, the word and, right? So this is the answer going that way. So if you understand that, then you now should be able to do 7 and 8 right here. Okay? So we should be able to do this whole worksheet, except for the first four. We'll do that tomorrow in the next day of class. But we should be able to do 7 and 8 and actually 5 through 15. We should be able to do all of them.